Hi, I'm Allison with Flick Direct, and I'm here with David Oyelowo to talk about lawmen Bass Reeves. Let's talk about Bass Reeves. How did you first hear about him, and what were your first thoughts? I first heard about him in 2014. A producer by the name of David Permit approached me with the idea of doing some kind of screen version <laughs> of this. Um, and after a very short uh, amount of research online about him, I just couldn't believe that there wasn't already a film, a TV show, a, a myriad of them actually, by the way, um, because his life just seemed so extraordinary, fantastical. It felt like a story that almost uh, wrote itself. Mm. And uh, so I, as someone who had loved um, Westerns growing up, as someone who is always looking for ways to exhibit black people in a way that I feel is commensurate with how powerful mm -hmm. and essential they are, not only in storytelling, but in the world, this was just a, a home run for me. And so the obsession with uh, with getting the story told um, started then. So it's been 10 years for you making this yeah, journey. Yeah, 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 about, oh, I guess it, yes. I guess it has been. Yes, it yeah. has. Yeah. Let's talk about Bass because he was, a, he was born into slavery yep. and then ran. Yeah. And became a deputy U.S. Marshal, the first black deputy U.S. Marshal yeah. in the Indian Territories. Mm -hmm. 32 years, barely ever injured, mm. which is pretty remarkable. Yeah. So what aspect of his story do you feel is most important for people to understand? Well, that's why, you know, with, with Lom and Bass Reeves, we focused in on a period mm. of his life as opposed to the totality, because to be perfectly honest, even eight episodes is by no means enough to really do it justice. As you say, born into enslavement, escaped enslavement, spent a number of years uh, with Native Americans where he learned the skills that went on to be applicable as a deputy U.S. Marshal, but then was mm -hmm. a farmer for a time, a failed farmer, I think had a total of 10 kids. I think it was Ooh. 11 and, and one of them passed away. Yeah. But then a 32 year career in law enforcement, 3000 arrests. Uh, and and uh, not only that, but the Indian Territory was deemed to be the most dangerous part of America at that mm -hmm. time. The mortality rate for deputy US Marshals was incredibly high. It, it, it mathematically makes no sense that he mm. did it for as long as he did. So when, when you factor all of that in with that breadth of time as, as part of the equation, what we chose to do is to start with just the end of his enslavement, going into the Civil War, mm -hmm. him escaping, and then the period that uh, he then goes into to being a deputy U.S. Marshal because it's where he goes from being enslaved to empowered. And I think that is really mm. uh, the most inspiring, if you like, portion of his life and the thing that I think is most kind of amazing about him. Absolutely. I, I agree. It was very empowering to watch this man fear for his life mm. and then become well known, right. really, throughout the territory. For you, mm. as an actor, what skills did you have to learn? How difficult were they to learn? What came naturally to you to play Reeves? Well, you, you, you can't play someone like Bass Reeves and not know your way around a horse. So, um, <laughs> you know, I had, I had ridden horses before, but nowhere near to the degree that I was going to have to for this. So it was a year of, of horse riding um, that, I, that I had to put in several times a week, several hours on any given day, um, just to get to the point where it just felt and looked completely natural. I remember mm -hmm. seeing um, Kevin Costner in Dances with Wolves and just being so blown away mm -hmm. by his ability uh, in terms of the skills he had to have for that film. Uh, and that was, and even though I had seen that film way before I even knew anything about Bass Reeves, even before I wanted to be an actor, if I'm mm. honest, but it, it stuck with me as something that, that was impactful mm -hmm. in relation to watching that character. So I knew that's something I had to master. Um, it was a grueling shoot, six months. Uh, in Texas. In Texas. Yes. 
inclement weather. I oh. mean, crazy, crazy weather. <laughs> and and it's just one of those ones where I'm in almost every scene, so you cannot get injured. So I, you know, I, I spent a lot of time getting physically strong enough. Mm. And then there's the accent. You know, as you can tell, I don't sound like someone from Oklahoma, <laughs> no, Arkansas, or Texas. Um, and so, you know, there was a, a fair bit of work had to go into that as well. But that's, that's all the stuff I love as an actor. I, I, I really relish that stuff. And when you were learning some of the Choctaw language, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how um, difficult was that to do? And what did you learn about yourself while you were learning that language? Oh, gosh, good question. Um, the, the, the Choctaw, the stakes around that became way higher than I anticipated when I first read it. Mm. Because the lady who was teaching me Choctaw, which is very, very difficult for me. You know, it's different when it's French or it's Spanish or it's German or it's a language that you kind of have a frame of reference for. Right. The sounds of Choctaw, it's just not a, a, a language I've been around and most people haven't been around. In fact, the reason why the stakes felt so high is that there are only about 300 speakers of wow. it left. Um, they actually lost a lot of them during COVID, uh, which oh. was which is really distressing to hear. So, the the need to get it right, the need to be really respectful in terms of it being in the show mm -hmm. in a way that hopefully for those who have Choctaw as their culture, as uh, 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 something they want to preserve we are also saying that it is something that is important to the culture by having it in the show. Um, and what I learned about myself is um, how much I can feel the fear and do it anyway. <laughs> um, because, you know, when I found that out about how few speakers there are left, a language that was incredibly difficult to learn, I, I you know, I just, I just went all out to try and make sure I, I, I got it right. Mm. Incredible. I was impressed, but I don't know Choctaw language, so <laughs> doesn't say much. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm glad you bought it <laughs> even so. I did, yes. As executive producer, mm -hmm. wearing that hat, were there times where you felt conflicted in terms of what was being put on the screen and what you wanted to see happen? There's always compromises to make uh, when you're making a show, when hundreds of people are involved in the endeavor. Um, when art is subjective, you know, what is moving to one person is not necessarily the same for another. Yes. But I will say that um, th there is a decent amount of what I hoped the show would be that is on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, because, to be honest, in the years of rejection mm -hmm. and struggle and challenge to get the show made, it had never really felt like we were going to get to tell it at this scale. Mm. Um, you know, wh whether it's films like Selma or A United Kingdom or Queen of Cartway, you know, several other films I have done that have centered black people in a, in, sometimes in a period setting that mm. should really warrant tens of millions of dollars. We've had to do it for far less. Mm. They're just not as valued, uh, these stories, unfortunately. But I, I, I have to say this is probably the first time in my career where I've been part of producing a story where it has been given the kind of budget that the story warrants. And so um, a, a good deal of what one would hope the Bass Reef story would be is, is, is up on the screen. Fantastic. Mm. I know that Taylor Sheridan is involved with this, and at one point, this was going to be either a spin-off or a part of Yellowstone mm -hmm. production. Mm -hmm. What about that would have changed the narrative? Yeah, it, it was never going to be a spin-off of, oh. of Yellowstone. Okay. That was um, some clever executive at a studio somewhere <laughs> uh, doing a piece of marketing. Um, but uh, but you know, I get it. Um, yeah. That that's a, a beloved show, and and I think that certainly got people's attention. But for me personally, Bass Reeves' story doesn't need to be. Mm an addendum or an offshoot of a very, very different story. Um, and so um, I heard that along with the rest of the world and we fixed it pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> so um, so it was it was never it was never going to be that. Certainly, okay. certainly not not for me. But I will say that what the um, 
the notoriety of Yellowstone yes. and all of those shows that have come out of the Taylor Sheridan camp gave us were proof points, were oh. um, of the fact that there is an audience, that the Western isn't dead, that this history still resonates enormously, um, and that it is global. And so to, to, to get to ride the coattails of that mm. with this story was, was very significant. And you mentioned global. We had spoken off screen about people saying this doesn't have a global reach. Mm. What do you say to them now? Well, I mean, the show has gone on to be the most watched show globally on Paramount Plus in the last 12 months. So I think that speaks for itself. I always felt that this would be, should be uh, global. And the fact that it now has proven to be is is great. But, you know, I feel like we've we've done this a number of times now as black people, whether it's you will a, a black superhero be embraced. Oh. And then you see what Black Panther did. You yes. know, I did a, a film called The Butler, which yeah. we couldn't get financing for. And then it went on to make one hundred and seventy million dollars and all things that that people uh, certainly didn't anticipate. Um, so, you know, I don't know how many times one has to prove that uh, black and brown people are actually the global majority <laughs> and that the combination of that and streaming being a digital distribution that is truly global yes. means that you, you no longer have the same degree of barrier of entry mm -hmm. for audiences. And so even more so now than 10, 20 years ago, um, stories like this are actually the stories that are global as a opposed to the ones that we keep getting force fed. Very quickly, as we wrap up, he was born 200 years ago. Mm. If he had been born 50 years ago, mm. knowing what he did with his life 200 years ago and his circumstances of his birth, mm. what do you think he would be today? <laughs> um, wow. Uh, what would Bass Reeves be would today? Would he be a leader? Would he be an outlaw? Um, I, you know what? I think he, I don't know that he would be a leader. Mm. I think he would be, uh, uh, uh probably in law enforcement somewhere <laughs> doing it incredibly well. Yes. He's someone who I don't think went out of his way to be a pioneer. Mm. He's someone I don't think went out of his way to be the first. He actually wanted a quiet life. Mm. He was quite happy being a farmer. Um, he had these skills that he didn't particularly love, mm. uh, you know, in terms of being a marksman. And he wasn't, you know, he didn't go into politics. He wasn't out there uh, being an activist either. He actually was quite quiet with mm. the way he did things. He just really believed in justice. And I think he was one of those for such a time as this people, whereby he was just born right place, right time. You know, mm. if, if he were born 10 years earlier, uh, he probably would have aged out of being a deputy U.S. Marshal okay. because he was going into that in his 30s. Yeah. Uh, and that's a physically incredibly demanding thing. But he happened to be the right age at the right time when this very small window of time yes. that is reconstruction, these 10 to 12 years where black people were given agency and empowerment between the Civil War and Jim Crow. So, you know, I just think he was he was born at the right time in order to go on to do what what he did. Well, I love his story. I love your portrayal. Thank you so much for bringing this to the world. Thanks, Alison. It was a pleasure.